In the tumultuous era of Japan's Sengoku period, few figures stand out as dramatically as Toyotomi Hideyoshi, a man whose remarkable rise from peasant origins to the pinnacle of power captures the essence of possibility and peril. His meteoric ascent, fueled by a combination of cunning, bravery, and acute political acumen, forever altered the landscape of Japan and laid the groundwork for national unity. Yet Hideyoshi's reign is a multifaceted saga of triumph and contradictions, showcasing the intricate interplay between military prowess and the subtleties of government that define Japanese history. Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, it's great to meet you. And if you're coming back, as always, it's a pleasure to have you with me again. If you'd like to support the channel, why don't you go check out the Patreon? Or, if you'd just like to enjoy the videos, just leave it with a like, comment and subscribe, if you are so inclined to do so. Well, without further ado, let's get on to today's topic. The Life of Toyotomi Hideyoshi Before the year 1570, the early life of Hideyoshi remains shrouded in mystery, with only sparse documents and letters from that period shedding light on his existence at all. His own writings, which started from 1577, offer very few details about his life before this time. Traditionally, it's believed that Hideyoshi was born on the 16th of February, 1537, according to the Japanese lunar calendar, which translates to the 17th of March, 1537, on the Julian calendar. His place of birth was Nakamura, in the Owari province, now part of modern-day Nakamura Ward in Nagoya, during the tumultuous Sengoku period, that's the country at war, the Warring States era, very dangerous. This era was characterized by relentless warfare and the downfall of the Ashikaga Shogunate. Hideyoshi emerged from humble beginnings, lacking any noble samurai heritage. His father, Kinoshita Yayamon, was an Ashigaru, that was essentially a foot soldier serving the samurai class, but without any real prestige. Without a family name and known in his youth as Hiyoshimaru, or Bounty of the Sun, Hideyoshi faced the early loss of his father Yayamon in 1543, when he was merely a lad of seven years old. Numerous tales swirl around Hideyoshi's younger years, including his venture to a temple for his own education. However, he reportedly soon found the monastic life unsuitable, and left in pursuit of greater adventures. Adopting the name Kinoshita Tokijiro, he initially found service within the Imagawa clan, becoming an attendant to a local leader, Matsushita Yukitsuna. His journey took him to the domain of Imagawa Yoshimoto, a daimyo in Suruga province. Hideyoshi's time there was marked by his eventual desertion. Absconding with funds that Matsushita Yukitsuna had entrusted to him. I'm sure he regretted that. 
in the year of 1558, Hideyoshi embarked on a pivotal chapter of his life, joining the ranks of the Oda clan as an Ashigaru, or foot soldier. The Oda, ruling over Hideyoshi's native Owari province, were under the command of the ambitious Oda Nobunaga. Oh, and by the way, my three videos on Nobunaga, Ieyasu, and uh, Hideyoshi kind of tie in together. Hideyoshi quickly distinguished himself, ascending to the role of Nobunaga's sandal bearer. It doesn't sound like much, but the sandal bearer was a person of considerable status, nothing to be scoffed at. His biographers recount how Hideyoshi took charge of Kiyosu Castle's renovations, a narrative often debated for its authenticity, though, and oversaw the clan's kitchen operations. Apparently he was quite skilled behind the stove. His adeptness did not go unnoticed by Nobunaga, by the way, who, after his victory over Imagawa Yoshimoto at the Battle of Okazuma in 1560, recognized Hideyoshi as a trusted advisor. The year 1561 marked Hideyoshi's marriage to One, the adopted progeny of Asano Nagakatsu, a descendant of the illustrious Minamoto no Yorimitsu. Alongside his half-brother, Hashiba Koichiro, and allies, Hachisuka Makatatsu and Maeno Nagayasu, Hideyoshi undertook the fortification of Sunamata Castle, strategically positioned in hostile territory. Legend celebrates Hideyoshi for erecting a fortification at Sunamata overnight and unveiling a concealed path to Mount Inaba, leading to the capitulation of the local defenders. Hideyoshi's talent as a negotiator came to the forefront in 1564, particularly in his dealings with Minnow warlords. Employing diplomacy and generous monetary incentives, he persuaded many to abandon their allegiance to the Saito clan, securing the loyalty of key figures like the strategist Takanaka Shigeharu for Nobunaga's cause. His efforts were instrumental in Nobunaga's unchallenged conquest of the Inabayama Castle in 1567. Now, despite all of his modest origins, in 1568, Hideyoshi had risen to become one of Nobunaga's most esteemed generals, adopting the name Hashiba Hideyoshi, a name derived from the characters of Oda's closest confidants. Hideyoshi's military acumen was further demonstrated in 1570, during the retreat from Azai Asakura forces at Kanegasaki, where he orchestrated a masterful rearguard action. This feat was followed by his leadership at the Battle of Anagawa marking his debut in commanding Oda troops in open conflict. By 1573, following successful campaigns against the Azai and Asakura, Nobunaga named Hideyoshi Daimyo of three districts in northern Omi province. Initially stationed at Udani Castle, Hideyoshi later relocated to Kunitomo, renaming it Nagahama in Nobunaga's honor. His tenure in Inahama on Lake Biwa saw the enhancement of the Kunimoto firearms factory, significantly boosting its production. 
Firearms, by the way, were generally new thing at this time in Japan. Not all of the warlords had them, but the ones that did were very glad to have them. The Portuguese had given the Japanese firearms some, perhaps some 40, 50 years before. For them it was generally a new idea as well. Moving on. Hideyoshi's military career continued to flourish with his capture of Itami Castle in 1574. Participation in the Battle of Nagashino against the Takeda clan in 1575 and involvement in several significant sieges, including the Siege of Mitsuji as part of the Ishiyama Honganji War. His contributions were pivotal in Nobunaga's campaign to conquer the Jugoku region from the Mori clan, including battles at Tedorigawa, Miki, Takamatsu, and Dori. During the critical moments of the siege of Takamatsu, a dramatic turn of events unfolded on June the 21st, 1582, when Oda Nobunaga and his eldest son, Nobutada, fell victim to betrayal. In what is known as now the Honoji Incident, Akechi Mitsuhide's forces launched a treacherous attack, leading to their assassination within the sacred walls of the Honoji Temple in Kyoto. This tragic event abruptly halted Nobunaga's ambitious endeavor to unify Japan under a centralized rule. In the wake of this betrayal, Hideyoshi swiftly shifted his focus from the ongoing siege to seek retribution for his fallen lord. Prioritizing the need for swift justice over prolonged conflict, he brokered a peace with the Mori clan, freeing himself to confront the perpetrator of Nobunaga's demise. Not more than thirteen days following the treachery, Hideyoshi faced Mitsuhide in the Battle of Yamazaki. The decisive engagement not only allowed Hideyoshi to exact his revenge for Nobunaga, but also enabled him to seize the reins of power and authority that Nobunaga himself had once wielded. In the wake of the Honoji incident on June 21st, 1582, which saw the tragic demise of the Odas, the landscape of Japanese power dynamics was irrevocably altered. Hideyoshi, driven by that desire for retribution, swiftly annihilated the betrayers, and it was his time to shine. In a monumental move to cement his power, Hideyoshi initiated the construction of Osaka Castle in 1582, on the grounds of the erstwhile Ishiyama Honganji Temple, previously raised by Nobunaga. Completed in 1597, this formidable fortress would later emerge as the Toyotomi clan's final bastion following Hideyoshi's passing. As 1582 waned, Hideyoshi's influence began to surge. He orchestrated a gathering of the era's most formidable daimyo at Kiyosu Castle to deliberate on the succession of Nobunaga. The assembly saw Oda Nobukatsu and Nobutaka, Nobunaga's sons, at loggerheads with each other, compelling Hideyoshi to advocate for Nobunaga's grandson, Samboshi, also known as Hidenobu, as the rightful heir. 
Although Shibata Katsurie initially endorsed Samboshi, he later shifted his allegiance to Nobutaka, for whom he had conducted the Genpuku ceremony, and aligned with Takigawa Kazumasu against Hideyoshi. Genpuku ceremonies, by the way, are like a coming of age. However, Hideyoshi, with the backing of Oda Nobukatsu and the support of other Oda clan leaders, secured both Samboshi and his own standing within the clan. He adeptly distributed Nobunaga's domains among the generals and formed a council of four to assist in governance, laying the groundwork for his authority. The rivalry between Hideyoshi and Shibata Katsuie culminated in the Battle of Shizukatake. Here, Hideyoshi's strategic acumen was on full display as he crushed Katsuie's forces, consolidating his power, neutralizing opposition within the Oda clan and extending his control over thirty provinces. This battle was notable not just for Hideyoshi's triumph, but also for the valor of Domjusto Takayama, the esteemed Christian daimyo and samurai who fought valiantly alongside Hideyoshi. In 1584, the stage was set for a significant confrontation in the wake of Nobunaga's death as Nobukatsu, another one of Nobunaga's sons, continued to express his open hostility towards Hideyoshi. Aligning with Tokugawa Ieyasu, Nobukatsu's alliance set the groundwork for the Battle of Komaki and Nagakute. This clash, however, did not decisively favor either side and in the end it resulted in a tactical stalemate. While Hideyoshi's forces sustained considerable losses, neither he nor Ieyasu directly engaged in combat with each other. Ieyasu's strategy effectively halted the progress of Hideyoshi's allies, demonstrating the complexities of samurai warfare and alliances. The conflict reached a turning point following the deaths of Ikeda Tsuneoki and Mori Nagayoshi, prompting both Hideyoshi and Ieyasu to withdraw their forces. In the aftermath, Hideyoshi sought reconciliation, extending peace to both Nobukatsu and Ieyasu thereby dissolving the immediate cause for war between the Tokugawa and Hashiba clans. In a gesture of goodwill, and as a strategic move to secure peace, Hideyoshi sent his young sister, Asahi Nakata, and their mother, Omandokoro, to Ieyasu as hostages. Amidst all of this, Hideyoshi's status and influence continued to rapidly ascend. Now, unlike his predecessor, Oda Nobunaga, Hideyoshi did not attain the shogunate. Instead, he pursued a different path to legitimize and enhance his standing. By being adopted by Konoe Sakihisa, a member of the esteemed Fujiwara clan, Hideyoshi aligned himself with one of the most noble lineages in Japan. This strategic move paved the way for him to acquire a series of high-ranking court titles, culminating in the prestigious appointment as Imperial Regent in 1585. That same year, in a significant ceremonial gesture, the imperial court formally bestowed upon him the clan name Toyotomi, 
marking his departure from the Fujiwara identity. Hideyoshi's ambitions were not solely martial, nor were they solely political. In 1587, he constructed the luxurious Jurukudai Palace, embodying his wealth, power, and showing off his cultural sophistication. This grand residence also served as a venue for entertaining the highest echelons of society, including Emperor go Yosei, whom Hideyoshi hosted in 1588, a year later. And these developments not only consolidated Hideyoshi's dominion over the military and political spheres, but also signified his pronounced impact on the cultural landscape of the country, demonstrating his unique blend of martial skill political acumen, and cultural patronage. Later, in 1585, Hideyoshi targeted the Negoro-ji Temple, a stronghold of warrior monks of Ki province skilled in firearms and allied with both the Iko-iki and Tokugawa Ieyasu, Hideyoshi's notable adversary. Their support for Tokugawa in the prior conflict at Kamaki and Nagakute provoked Hideyoshi's campaign against them. After eliminating other militant outposts in the region, Hideyoshi's forces besieged Nagoro-ji, attacking from multiple directions. The monks, many of whom retreated to Ota Castle, faced Hideyoshi's onslaught as the temple was set aflame, with the samurai mercilessly cutting down those who attempted to flee the raging inferno. The campaign in Shikoku in 1585 marked another ambitious military endeavor by Hideyoshi, with an impressive force led by Toyotomi Hidenaga, Toyotomi Hidetsugu, Ukita Hidie, and the Mori clans Takakage and Motoharu. Hideyoshi aimed to conquer Shikoku, the smallest of Japan's four main islands. Then, under the control of Chokusabe Motochika. Despite the vast numerical superiority of Hideyoshi's army, Motochika resolved to defend his domain. The conflict reached its zenith at the siege of Ichinomiya Castle, which endured for a long and grueling 26 days. Ultimately, Motochika capitulated, retaining control of Tosa province, while Hideyoshi's generals divided the rest of Shikoku among themselves. The Toyama campaign in the late summer of 1585 saw Hideyoshi turning his attention to Echu and Hida provinces. Leading a substantial force, Hideyoshi dispatched Kanamori Nagachika to dismantle the Anegakoji clan of Hida culminating in the siege of Toyama Castle. The castle, defended by Sasa Narimasa, and significantly outnumbered, quickly fell to Hideyoshi, and he once again asserted his dominance over a new region. In the following year, 1586, the Kyushu campaign represented Hideyoshi's effort to bring Kyushu under his control, challenging the Shimazu clan. With Toyotomi Hidenaga leading a southern assault and Hideyoshi himself advancing from the west, their combined forces, vastly outnumbering the Shimazu, 
converged in Satsuma. The subsequent surrender of the Shimazu and the siege of Kagoshima Castle marked a significant victory for Hideyoshi, paving the way for his campaign against the Hojo clan in Kanto, the last major clan left to oppose him. Amidst these military achievements, in 1587, Hideyoshi took steps to banish Christian missionaries from Kyushu, aiming to tighten his grip on the region and its daimyo, many of whom were Christian. You see, this is where the Portuguese were getting in. Despite the official stance, Hideyoshi's practical approach to trade with Europeans meant that individual Christians often continued their activities unofficially. Very complex. In a strategic move to solidify his control and quell potential uprisings, Hideyoshi initiated the renowned Sword Hunt of 1588. This decree prohibited ordinary peasants from possessing weapons, compelling the collection of arms across the realm. The confiscated weapons were repurposed into a symbolic statue of Buddha, reflecting Hideyoshi's intent to impose peace and order by disarming the populace. This act effectively quelled peasant revolts, secured a more stable regime, but at the cost of the individual daimyo's autonomy. Oh, I can see the Americans listening to this shaking their head now. <laughs> Hello to all American listeners. The Odawara campaign in 1590 marked a significant milestone in Hideyoshi's military endeavors targeting the Hojo clan stronghold in the Kanto region. This campaign was notable for its alliance between Hideyoshi and Tokugawa, showcasing a united front against the Hojo. The besieging force, numbering around 200,000, laid siege to Odawara Castle which was defended by around 82,000 Hojo warriors. This siege, distinguished by its unconventional tactics, including entertainment for the samurai by a host of performers, lasted three months before the Hojo eventually capitulated. This victory dissolved the last vestiges of resistance to Hideyoshi's rule, marking the end of the Sengoku period. In a strategic exchange, Ieyasu traded his five provinces for the eight Hojo-ruled provinces in Kanto, cementing their alliance further. The death of Sen no Rikyu in February of 1591 under Hideyoshi's orders marked a tragic turn in their relationship. Rikyu, a revered master of the tea ceremony, and a close confidant to Hideyoshi, had significantly influenced Japanese cultural aesthetics. Despite his subsequent focus on no, that's a kind of Japanese entertainment, Hideyoshi's continued engagement with projects reflecting Rikyu's aesthetics hinted at possible remorse over his drastic decision. The Kunohe Rebellion in 1591, an insurrection led by Kunohe Masazane against the Nanbu clan in Mutsu province, represented the final conflict in Hideyoshi's campaign to unify Japan. With the support of Hideyoshi and Tokugawa Ieyasu, the rebellion was quickly crushed culminating in the siege of Kunohe Castle. The overwhelming might of Hideyoshi's forces led to Mazane's surrender, 
and the execution of the castle's defenders, effectively consolidating Hideyoshi's control and concluding the Sengoku period. The precarious future for the Toyotomi was starkly highlighted by the death of Hideyoshi's only child, Tsurumatsu, in the September of 1591, followed closely by the demise of his half-brother Hidenaga. This series of unfortunate events left Hideyoshi without a direct heir, until he chose to adopt his nephew, Hidetsugu, naming him as the successor in January 1592. In a significant shift of power, Hideyoshi then re-signed from his position in Kampaku, adopting the venerable title of Taiko, essentially a retired regent thus enabling Hidetsugu to step into the role of Kampaku. Amidst concerns of his declining health, Hideyoshi remained driven by a desire to achieve a grandiose feat that would truly cement his legacy. Embracing the ambitious dream of his predecessor, Oda Nobunaga, Hideyoshi set his sights on the monumental goal of conquering the Ming dynasty through an invasion of Korea, then known as Koryu or Joseon. By the Ming dynasty, he means China, by the way. And the Ming dynasty, well, that was a big one. So he certainly got some very big goals. Now, this bold objective mirrored Nobunaga's expansive vision and underscored Hideyoshi's aspiration to leave a permanent mark on history. Hideyoshi's interactions with Korea began as early as 1587, some years earlier, with requests for safe passage through Korea into China, reflecting his long-standing ambition. Korea, which was allied with Ming China and wary of potential consequences, steadfastly refused these overtures. The Joseon government's apprehensions were rooted in the fear that granting passage to Japanese forces would inevitably draw massive Ming Chinese military presence onto Korean soil so as they had a chance to confront Hideyoshi's army, and thereby jeopardizing Korean security. Despite initial rebuffs in April and July of 1591, Hideyoshi remained persistent, ultimately commanding the commencement of preparations for an invasion of Korea in the August of 1591 setting the stage for a significant military campaign that would further extend his influence and challenge the regional power dynamics of East Asia. In the inaugural campaign against Korea, which commenced in April of 1592, Hideyoshi orchestrated a meticulously planned invasion. He appointed Ukita Hidei, as the field marshal, setting the stage for a strategic assault on the Korean peninsula. By June of the same year, Konoshi Yukinaga had led the occupation of Seoul, the capital of the Joseon dynasty, marking a swift and decisive advance. The fall of Seoul prompted Japanese commanders to convene a war council within the city, where they devised the Hachi Dokuniwari strategy, entailing the division of Korea into eight sectors for targeted conquests. Each sector was assigned to one of the eight divisions of Hideyoshi's army, spearheading simultaneous assaults across the peninsula. 
This strategy of dispersion saw notable generals leading their divisions against various provinces as follows. Pyongyang in the north was targeted by Konishi Yukinaga's 1st Division. Ham Yong fell under the purview of Kato Kiyomasa. Huang He was to be conquered by Kurodo Nagamasa. Guang Wan faced the onslaught of Mori Katsunaga's 4th Division, while Chong Chong was assigned to Fukushima Masanori. Kabukawa Takakage was assigned Jeola and Gyeongsang was the objective of Mori Teramoto's 7th Division. The 8th and final division, led by Ukita Hidie, was assigned Gyeonggi, including Seoul. This comprehensive and rapid campaign yielded significant territorial gains within just four short months, providing Hideyoshi's forces with a pathway into northern China and dominating much of Korea. However, the Korean king, Sun Jo of Joseon, in a desperate bid for survival, retreated to Uiju and implored Ming China for military support. In response, the Wan Li Emperor dispatched a formidable army led by General Li Ru Song in 1593 aiming to thwart the Japanese advance into China and reclaim the Korean peninsula. General Lee's forces, numbering around 43,000, launched a counter-offensive that recaptured Pyongyang in January 1593, encircling Seoul later on. And yes, that Pyongyang is the Pyongyang you're thinking of up in the north. Despite their successes, the Japanese commanders, including Takakage and Hideki, managed a victory at the Battle of Byokjegwan. Nevertheless, the Japanese naval forces faced a devastating defeat at the hands of Admiral Yi Sun Sin crippling Japan's logistical capabilities and effectively halting the ambitious conquest of China. The campaign's conclusion not only marked a significant setback for Hideyoshi's imperial aspirations, but it also coincided with domestic crises. The birth of Hideyoshi's second son, Hideyori, in 1593, introduced a quandary of succession, prompting the tragic exile and subsequent forced taking of one's own life of Hideyoshi's nephew and designated heir, Hidetsugu, in 1595. Pardon me, there's certain words that YouTube do not like. Anyway, the ensuing purge of Hidetsugu's family underscored the brutal measures Hideyoshi was willing to take to secure his dynasty's continuity. For example, in a stark demonstration of Hideyoshi's increasingly severe stance on Christianity, January 1597 saw the arrest of 26 Christians, comprising European and Japanese adherents, who were then subjected to public crucifixion in Nagasaki. This act of suppression aimed to deter the Japanese populace from converting to Christianity, reflecting Hideyoshi's efforts to consolidate his control over Japan amidst his expansive military campaigns. I have a whole video on the Christian persecutions in Japan, if you want to know more about that. I will just briefly gloss over that in this video, as it's quite a deep topic. The prolonged conflict in Korea, marked by intermittent negotiations and miscommunications, led to a stalemate between the opposing forces. Both the Japanese and Ming envoys each mistakenly believing they had conversed the other into submission, reported false victories to their respective leaders. 
That's right. One person reported that the other side had surrendered, while the other side reported to their side the same. So they both, simply, went their separate ways. Well, this breakdown in diplomacy prompted Hideyoshi to commission Kobayakawa Hideaki with the task of spearheading a second invasion of Korea. In hopes of replicating, or at least surpassing, the initial campaign's achievements. However, this renewed effort failed to gain momentum, well, at least as much momentum as the first invasion got, with the Japanese forces largely confined to Gyeongsang province. By the June of 1598, the situation on the Korean peninsula had become increasingly dire. Despite successfully repelling multiple Chinese offences at Sunchong and Sacheong, the Japanese found themselves simply unable to advance any further. The Ming army, gathering its strength, was poised for a final decisive push. Amidst these challenges, the Battle of Sacheon, led by Shimazu Yoshihiro, stood out as a significant Japanese triumph. Yet the victory was bittersweet, as it came at a time when all involved, China, Japan and Korea, were grappling with the immense toll of the protracted conflict. Exhausted by the relentless warfare, and aware of the sacrifices his troops had made, Hideyoshi's concern for his soldiers' welfare deepened. His admonition to his commander in Korea, imploring that its soldiers should not be left to perish far from their homeland, reflected a poignant acknowledgement of the war's human cost. This sentiment underscored the diminishing returns of the military campaign and hinted at the shifting priorities in Hideyoshi's strategy, as he grappled with the realities of a war that had extended far beyond its anticipated scope and scale. Either way, even if they did manage to conquer Korea, what would be left to conquer China with? Not very much. Well, unfortunately, those dreams of conquering that great ancient kingdom had to fall by the wayside. As Toyotomi Hideyoshi passed away on September 18th, 1598, at Fushimi Castle. His parting words to his closest daimyo and generals highlighted his reliance on them, expressing a poignant farewell without leaving any final instructions. In an effort to maintain morale, his death was concealed by the Council of Five Elders, who then commanded the Japanese forces in Korea to retreat. Hideyoshi's inability to secure Korea thwarted any further ambitions to invade China. In the aftermath of Hideyoshi's demise, the Council of Five Elders struggled to curtail the ambitions of Tokugawa Ieyasu. High-ranking generals Kato Kiyomasa and Fukushima Masanori, despite their valiant service in war, returned to find Ishida Matsunari wielding power and showing them disdain. This led them to align with Tokugawa Ieyasu, the influence once held by Hideyoshi's young son and heir, Hideyori, had diminished rapidly. Ieyasu's ascendancy was cemented by the victory of his eastern army over the western army, led by Ishida Mitsunari. At the Battle of Sekigara in 1600. By 1603, Ieyasu was appointed shogun, founding the Tokugawa shogunate which would dominate Japan for over two centuries. His subsequent assaults on Osaka Castle in 1614 and 15 resulted in the tragic deaths of Yodo Dono, 
Hideyoshi's concubine, and Hideyori, effectively extinguishing the Toyotomi lineage. The lack of adult heirs, leaving only the young Hideyori as a successor, is widely regarded as a pivotal factor in the Toyotomi dynasty's decline and eventual collapse. The earlier deaths of Hideyoshi's brother, Hidenaga, a crucial supporter of his rise to power in 1591, and his nephew, Hidetsugu, his sole adult heir in 1595 under orders for suspected rebellion, severely destabilized the Toyotomi's regime's foundation. Well, either way, Ieyasu would be the one who takes over the mantle. And as one warlord falls, another rises to take his place. Well, thank you very much for listening. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something. Isn't it so fascinating, this period of time? And aren't we so lucky that it's so well documented by those primary sources? I'd like to thank my mega patron, Stark Factory, for his glorious contribution to the channel. Thank you very much. I know you're out there. I know you're listening. And if you would like to become a member of the Patreon, then follow the links. It's incredibly easy to do. If not, continue to enjoy the content at your own pace. I'd like to thank you once again for joining me, and I will wish you all the best in everything you do. See you in the next video, everyone. Good night. <laughs>